There's two areas in which we can look at evidence for the construction of phylogenetic trees. One has to do with anatomy, the other has to do with genes. And uh, when you look at both of those areas, if I read your chapter correctly, you have multiple cases in which conflicting phylogenetic trees are produced. And not only that, do they conflict within each other, such as a tree constructed from one or more genes conflicts with a tree constructed with one or more other genes. And not only is it the case that a phylogenetic tree based on one certain trait, and you mentioned the example of the colum, you can have a phylogenetic tree based on one aspect of anatomy conflicting with a different one, but you can have conflicts between the two sides. You can have conflicts between a phylogenetic tree based on DNA with a phylogenetic tree based on anatomy. Now, I haven't studied too much of that area, so if you can enlighten us some in regards to details about those conflicts, that would be great. Sure. So there are different ways of constructing phylogenetic trees. Some phylogenetic trees are used constructing body parts or anatomy or morphology. Other phylogenetic trees are used, are constructed using DNA evidence, uh, basically sequencing genes and comparing the similarities and differences between genes, different organisms. And in all cases, the basic idea is that organisms that, that are more similar anatomically or genetically tend to be more closely related in a tree. And those that are okay. less similar tend to be more distantly related. Okay. So that, that's the basic way that these trees are constructed. Um, the problem is that sometimes you get very different results depending on which traits you use, whether we're talking about anatomy-based traits or uh, gene-based traits, you can get very different results for, uh, for what, what trees are created. And those trees often conflict with each other. Um, in fact, there's a, a paper that was published in the journal uh, Biological Reviews in 2012 that said that, that phylogenetic conflict is common and frequently the norm rather than the exception. Or another paper in Trends in Genetics said, the more we learn about the genomes, the less tree-like we find their evolutionary history. Or a study in the, the journal Genome Research said, different proteins generate different phylogenetic trees. So the problem is you take one gene or one trait, you get one version of the tree of life. You take another trait, you get another version of, or gene, you get another version of the tree of life. And what, what's basically going on here is, um, organisms or, or, or traits among organisms are not distributed in, in a tree-like manner, okay? If they were, then everything should be giving you basically the same tree-like pattern. But you get, you know, you get one gene gives you one tree, mm -hmm. and it says that you should be this degree of similarity to, to this organism. But then you look at another gene, and you find that actually that gene is more similar to your organism than it should be according to the tree that you first made. Okay, so that gene does not fit this tree. Um, same goes for, uh, for, uh, using, uh, anatomical traits to construct trees. So let me, let me just basically read you a little passage from the book, um, that I think will explain this, um, what, what phylogenetic conflict is. So, um, conflicts exist between trees based upon molecule molecules versus those based upon body structure called morphology. A review in Nature titled Bones, Molecules, or Both explained that, quote, evolutionary trees constructed by studying biological molecules often don't resemble those drawn up for morphology. And it admitted that, quote, battles between molecules and morphology are being fought across the tree of life. And then I said, a classic example involves attempts to construct a phylogenetic tree of the animal phyla. Traditionally, many of the phyla were grouped according to whether they had a central body cavity called a cell acelome. But molecular data contradicted that grouping and instead placed organisms that are morphologically distinct, such as nematodes and arthropods, very close, a result that nature called surprising. Higher up the tree, conflicts persist. In 2014, sequencing of various bird genomes showed that birds that were previously thought to be very closely related, water birds, birds of prey, and songbirds, evolved their groups defining traits convergently. As nature put it, the tree of life for birds has been redrawn. So you get these traits mm. that, you know, shouldn't be similar among two organisms. All right. Um, and, and, and so this is where you get these conflicts between trees, depending on what trait you use, you get one tree or another tree. It shows that there's similarities that are appearing in organisms 
that cannot be explained by a pattern of common descent. Thank you for listening. Credible Faith is a global missions-minded apologetics ministry with content available in seven different languages across seven websites, German, Russian, Italian, French, Spanish, Portuguese, and English. If you would like to support the global apologetics work of Credible Faith, go to CredibleFaith.org and click on the Donate icon. If you would like me to give an apologetics workshop or participate in a debate at your university, or if you would like me to give a Great Commission Missions Conference or Apologetics Conference at your church, get in touch with me through the Contact Us section of the Credible Faith website. You can also submit a request through the website to get Credible Faith's monthly email. If you are a native speaker of Russian, German, Italian, French, Spanish, or Portuguese, and if you notice that an essay from the English website is not available on the Credible Faith website for your language, feel free to get in touch with me about translating the essay, and I would read through your translated material for quality control and the desire to see content from the essay made available in your language. Thank you for listening, and have a great night.